Welcome, welcome everybody to our latest uh, in our What's New from Microsoft uh, webinar series, focusing on uh, improving your organization productivity. Now, I hope you got through lockdown version two unscathed. And let me start with a little bit of a, a rather weak attempt at bribery. I'm giving away this lovely box of chocolates to anybody that posts a question or comment in the Q&A, which you'll find on the top right hand side of the screen. Now, let's move on quickly. We're all using Teams to some degree. And we all want to take that same experience into our meeting rooms. So today, I'm going to focus on how best to kit out your meeting rooms to take advantage of the latest innovations uh, in Microsoft Teams that will make your users, wherever they are, in that physical meeting room or remote, massively more productive. Now, I cannot emphasize enough that it's not enough to only consider the in-room experience of those in the physical meeting room because so many of our people, even post-COVID, will be attending meetings remotely. And if you get it wrong, then joining a meeting as a remote user can make you feel like you're on the outside looking in, making you feel like you're less involved compared to those sitting in that physical meeting room. And importantly, Joining a meeting needs to be friction-free, making it easy to start or join a meeting so you're not spending that first 10 minutes fiddling with cables and connections, etc., just trying to get the damn meeting to work. So in this webinar, we're going to take a look at how you should fit out your various meeting rooms using Microsoft Teams devices that will make your meetings more inclusive and make your people massively more productive. Now let's start by looking at some research from Microsoft that helps us focus on the type of meetings we need to support in our meeting rooms. When we start looking at meeting spaces, we need to consider the types of meetings that take place inside your organization. Now, on average, a work will have around 10 meetings a week. And of those meetings, 27% will be status update meetings, like town hall events will be presenting or being presented to, whether, it'll be, uh, whether there won't be a great deal of interaction on that call. On the other side, we have collaboration meetings, which are around 22%. And that's where we'll have meetings where you've got three or four people, for example, in a physical or virtual room working on a single document or project together. Now, we can, see a set of we can also see a set of pretty damning stat uh, statistics in the top right-hand corner where we can see that 60% of meeting attendees are unsatisfied. 56% finding them unproductive. And finally, only 15% of meeting rooms are equipped with video. So when I get a customer telling me they have a number of meeting rooms, which are a mix of small, medium and large meeting rooms that they need kitting out for meetings, the first question I always ask is, what type of meetings do you expect to take place in these meeting rooms? Will they be using the rooms in a, a more traditional video and audio calling only fashion? Or will they be looking to take the full experience of Teams, for example, sharing and collaborating on content and extending that into the meeting room experience? Now, it's very easy for customers to fit out their own meeting rooms. And we see it happen a lot where customers will maybe get a desktop or a laptop, install the Teams client on it and attach a webcam to it and then start using it as a Teams meeting room space. Now, in theory, uh, yes, it works, uh, but only in the short term. Uh, give it a couple of months and you'll start seeing issues where the cache is not being deleted. It takes 10 minutes to boot up at the start of your meeting. Or there'll be a bunch of files on the machine that shouldn't be there. And there are people standing, walking around, writing on whiteboards that nobody else who's dialed in remotely can see. So they're feeling disconnected. So to address these problems, we use products which are called Microsoft Teams devices. Now, when we start looking at meeting room spaces, there are three uh, distinct product groups that we use uh, when kitting out the meeting rooms. The first one, you can see on the far right, is a Microsoft Surface Hub 2S, which is an all-in-one collaborative display. Now, with the Surface Hub, you have the best of collaborative experience, the best Microsoft whiteboard experience possible. Uh, and you can even make it mobile. You can attach a battery to the tray and move it around from room to room. Now in the middle, we have what we used to call the collaboration bars, which have been renamed recently as a Microsoft Teams room devices on Android. Now these are designed for the status update type of meetings. So the town hall type of events and designed for smaller meeting room spaces. Essentially, 
think of them as uh, your TV soundbar at home, but a soundbar that has cameras, microphones, speakers, runs Android, with the Teams experience on top of that. And then on the left, uh, we have what we call the MTR, or Microsoft Teams Room Devices, which are the stable, or staple, sorry, uh, of meeting rooms. They are what we classify as module by design, consisting of your compute unit, microphones, cameras, speakers, and a touch screen to control your meeting room experience. And depending on the room size, you can have all manner of cameras, mics, and speakers. It's all dependent on that, the room acoustics, the size, lighting, etc., of the room you're designing for. Now, this is a killer slide, helping us to uh, quickly decide on the kit we need per room. Now, across the top, we've got uh, the different types of meeting rooms you might have. And then on the left-hand side, we have the what we call the meeting room personas, which really is so important to decide what kit we need to put in those rooms. This has gone back to uh, what we discussed earlier around the types of meetings taking place in your organization. So when a customer turns around and says to me, uh, we have 10 meeting rooms and these are the sizes, tell me what uh, kit we need for them, I have to drill down and identify what type of meetings take place in those rooms. So as an example, in a large office, which could be the CEO's office, for example, where they're only ever uh, presenting or being presented to, then a collaboration bar is absolutely perfect for them. However, if that same exec wants to be able to annotate a document, co-author, have a digital whiteboard, and be able to collaborate with others, then, a potentially, then potentially a Surface Hub is the better option for them. If there's budget restriction, and the surface, the surface up there for is out of scope, then an MTR with a touch screen could be, the, could be the right solution. As we start moving through the slide from left to right, you can see the typical meeting room configurations where we have the MTR with a mix of different types of accessories. Now, from a Microsoft standpoint, the very best meeting room experience is actually a Microsoft Teams room device with a Surface Hub in the same room. And Microsoft Teams Room doesn't just deliver all your AV requirements of your meeting rooms. It also delivers a great many features that will enhance your meeting experience. Now, on the left-hand side, we have the features that are already available in, uh, on every single uh, MTR Microsoft Teams Room console. And on the right-hand side are the features that have recently been released or will be coming in the very short term. Now, things like uh, direct guest join for WebEx and Zoom. So if a client sends you a WebEx or a Zoom meeting request, the MTR will recognize it and pop it up on the calendar on the console, allowing you to use the one touch join button to join the meeting. I'll explain uh, the coordinated join with uh, Surface Hub 2S a little bit later. We've also got support for live captions. When you're on your laptop, for example, if you click on the three dots, you can select live captions. Well, you can do exactly that from the MTR console now. We've also got raised hands on the central console. You can also record meetings directly from the console. We can now use the spotlight function directly from the front console, so you can control whose video stream is seen by participants on the call. And you can also start ad hoc whiteboard sessions directly from the console. So you can see from this slide how Microsoft are bringing that full Microsoft Teams experience into meeting room. Something that we've been using and taking for granted as functionality in the Teams app that we run on our smartphones and laptops, for example. Now, what I want to do now is focus on uh, some of the hot new products and features recently announced by Microsoft Ignite. I just want to pick on some that really do resonate with me. For example, features that make meeting rooms COVID safe. I also want to look at uh, Microsoft's new intelligent speaker and intelligent camera. And finally, how you can use Microsoft Surface Hub 2S with Microsoft Teams Room, how you can integrate uh, those two experiences and take in, uh, the full value that the, that the Surface Hub brings to the table in the context within an MTR room. Now let's talk about one of Microsoft's latest innovations, the intelligent speaker. In the past, remote attendees may not have been able to fully follow along what might be happening in a remote 
physical meeting room where people start chatting and talking off speaker, for example. Microsoft therefore introduced the intelligent speaker for Microsoft Teams rooms, which includes a special seven microphone array to identify voices of up to 10 people in a single physical meeting room. Apart from providing great audio to the conference room, it also provides speaker attributed transcription. So after a quick one-time enrollment, the intelligent speaker identifies who's speaking in the room and adds the name and profile picture to the meeting transcript, which you can see live streaming on the right-hand side of this video. Making meetings more inclusive for all attendees, enabling attendees to spend less time note-taking and easily follow along with who said what in that physical remote meeting room. Now here in the video you can see what you as a remote user sees. You can see on the left uh, what the team is collaborating on. Uh, the midsection shows all the users taking part, three of whom are in that remote physical meeting room using one of these intelligent speakers. And finally, on the right hand side, we have the speaker attributed transcript scrolling through real time. Now I want to move on uh, to intelligent capture. This new feature is one of my personal favorites. It really, really is quite impactful. Now intelligent capture is another feature that helps uh, remote attendees feel more included and engaged in the team's meeting. When in-room participants want to use a traditional whiteboard to draw diagrams and jot down to-do lists, uh, typically remote attendees can't see what is on the board. So they're starting to feel uh, immediately a little bit disengaged. Now Intelligent Capture uses a dedicated content camera to intelligently detect crop and frame in-room whiteboards. Even if someone moves in front of the whiteboard, remote attendees will actually be able to see the content right through them. For me, this feature really is crucial for hybrid businesses where you have remote as well as in-room attendees for uh, collaborative meetings. Now, as a result of COVID, users really don't want to be touching uh, public surfaces. So let's do a quick overview of the features such as proximity join, managing meeting room capacity, and Cortana that make your meeting rooms COVID safe. Let's start with proximity-based join. Proximity Join allows users to join uh, the meeting room from their PC or mobile device by selecting the room audio in their Teams meeting pre-join screen. Using a Bluetooth beacon, the nearby room will be discovered and audio options will be auto-populated, allowing you to select the audio device you wish to use from your laptop. Now let's introduce, there is another, so I want to talk about this, there's another uh, proximity join use case, which I think is, is a bit of a killer. Now imagine you're in the office and you've just joined a Teams call via mobile phone. This happens in so many cases where you're running through the corridor trying to find a room to continue your meeting. Now if there's an MTR nearby, it will automatically, automatically send out a Bluetooth beacon assuming there's no meeting booked in it. And your phone will pick that up and it will, be, and it will say to you, hey, room XYZ is free. Would you like to add this room to your meeting? And you have the ability to hit the add button directly from your phone and it will seamlessly transfer the meeting from your device into the meeting room. Let's talk about room capacity. As part of uh, COVID touchless meeting experience, we also have what we call uh, meeting room capacity notification. Uh, so while you're in the meeting, if Teams sees that you've got more than, say, the six people you've set as a threshold in that room, it'll actually pop up a banner across the top to say there's too many people in the room. Let's talk about Cortana. Another touchless experience is the new voice assistant, which is powered by Cortana, which allows you, for example, to start or end the meeting using voice controls. So now you can walk into a room and say, hey, Cortana, join my meeting and it will automatically join the meeting for you. Now let's talk about, let's move on and talk about using the Surface Hub in an MTR room. One of Microsoft's latest innovations is using the Surface Hub to enhance that collaborative experience. Now in your meeting room, you can uh, maximize the screen real estate by using the front of room displays to show the attendees, yep, while using the Surface Hub to show content, 
or to conduct a whiteboarding session, allowing you to maximize that collaborative experience. Now that we understand the art of the possible in terms of how you might create the perfect meeting room experience that serves both the office-based as well as remote staff, I now want to talk about what you have to consider when looking at your various meeting room spaces and learn about how you should kit out your meeting room with the various um, uh, Microsoft Teams room uh, components. You'll have many different room sizes, ranging from huddle and small rooms to medium and large size meeting rooms. And in each room type, you'll have to make decisions on where to place cameras and microphones. What kind of field of view should the camera have? And how are you going to run cables to the table and to the monitors and displays? And what kind of acoustics and lighting are in each of these different size spaces? Let's take a look at the smaller uh, huddle type spaces that you might have. On the left, we see a small focus room. This is a great place for Teams rooms, be it the collaboration bar or the full Windows-based Teams room experience. Now on the right is a different situation. You'll notice there's no conference table. This is a type of environment that is great for the Surface Hub. As there's no table in front of any of the chairs, people can get up and walk directly to the Surface Hub to interact with it. But putting tables in place, people may feel hesitant to walk around it uh, to start interacting with the device like the Surface Hub. So be sure when going with the Surface Hub that the room is designed to encourage interactivity with that device. Now on this slide, we see the classic kind of small, medium and large type uh, meeting rooms. Now some have single displays, some have multiple displays. You'll see in the large meeting room, there's a whiteboard, so there's a chance to uh, make that a content camera enabled room, for example. So what I want to do now is slow down slightly and take a look at the components that make up the Teams room. Let's start with the touchscreen console. Uh, this will sit at the center of the table as the device that users interact with when joining and manage their meetings. There are many different form factors, some of which have compute models built in. Some can swivel, some are tilted, some are a little bit flat. The choice of vendor we use will dictate uh, what the central console will look like. Let's take a look at the uh, compute module. Now there's several different vendors that provide compute model, mod modules such as uh, Lenovo and HP. The compute uh, module runs Windows 10 Enterprise IoT uh, with Teams uh, running on top. In the images you can see a lot of uh, USB ports, uh, network ports, etc. All of the device in Teams rooms will eventually connect back into the compute module. The compute module will run in kiosk mode, so the user has no access to any settings, cannot load any programs, so the device is robust, works the same way every time and will be virus free. It is designed to be set and forget. For example, every room will enter a 2 a.m. maintenance window where it will stop, run a bunch of scripts, clean up the cache, delete any unnecessary files, apply any firmware updates, and then reboot itself and be ready for the next working day. Let's move on to cameras. Cameras are an important part of the Teams room environment. You'll see there are many, many different options available to you, depending on the environment. Some are all in one. For example, this one from Poly has the microphone and speakers built in. Uh, and this one from Logitech is much the same. We've already talked about the content camera. Here you can see the content camera properly, frame, properly framing uh, the marker board and continuing to show the content even though someone has walked in front of the whiteboard. Taking a quick look at the audio options, audio is crucial to a Teams room meeting so that you can hear what's going on. As you can see, uh, there are many options available to you from bars that hang below the display uh, to, microphone, to microphone panels that hang from the ceiling. So you have many options to help you decide which microphones and which speakers work best for your spaces. The final one is what displays should you use? There are many different display options available to you from uh, monitors hanging on walls to projectors. Any monitor that works with Windows 10 will work fine with, uh, within a Teams room. Now 4K displays are supported, but Teams will only show up to uh, 1080p images. And in a dual monitor situation, one of the two monitors can be touch enabled to support uh, interactive inking. Now let's browse to the website, Microsoft, the Microsoft website, aka.ms uh, forward slash Teams rooms and bring all this together. Now the Microsoft site highlights 
all the various Teams Room devices available. Now, if I scroll down and click on Space and select Mid-Size Meetings, uh, I can pick one of these devices and drill in and see what recommendation Microsoft has for the deployment of these rooms. As I scroll down, I can see a microphone, microphone guidance for the room. I can see a speaker guidance for the room, as well as camera, and be able to see uh, the field of view, uh, make sure this is uh, the right camera for the room I'm working on. There's also uh, a cable management diagram, which shows a high-level view of how the, uh, how the cables uh, will be connected. So the big question is, how do all these Teams Rooms components connect? Here's an example of a small Microsoft Teams Room configuration. Now we start with a compute module, which is at the heart of the Teams Room. Everything will eventually connect back to the compute module. The middle of the table console connects to the compute model via USB. And this console is what people will be interacting with. Microphones, audio and camera are all contained in this example in the one unit and that connects uh, via USB to the compute module. And the display will connect via HDMI back to the compute module. You may also enable a USB touchscreen for the monitor or a second monitor if you've got that. So let's look at a more complex configuration. Once again, we start with the compute module, which is the heart of the Teams Room system. The center of room uh, table console, which will connect via USB back to the compute module. Now we have things like display extensions. So these are the kinds of devices that will extend cabling beyond the standard. We have a separate camera, which in this case connects to the display extension and not directly back to the compute module. There are multiple speakers that can be added to the room. And in this case, they will connect via the display extension. We might have a table extension, which would connect devices such as microphones. So the microphones can connect to the table extensions via USB. The table extensions connect to the display extension via category six cabling. This large room might have dual monitors. Both these uh, monitors connect back to the compute module. And one of those monitors would be enabled for USB touchscreen as well. We can share a laptop screen directly into the meeting via a HDMI cable that's connected to the console. And uh, we might add in a content camera as well. The content camera will connect to the compute module using USB. Wow, there's so much you can do in taking the team's experience into your meeting rooms to help you make your organization the most productive it possibly can. Now let's start bringing this webinar to a conclusion by saying just a few words about Bedrock. Now we exist to help our clients become the best they possibly can by using Office 365 and Azure in its fullest way. Now we believe the current IT outsourcer and managed service market is failing its customers for three key reasons. Number one, they don't understand your business and how you use IT. They only uh, provide a generic type of service. Number two, they're not interested in helping you maximize your spend on IT. They simply see you as a monthly paycheck. And finally, number three, they're not geared up to advise on how IT can become a strategic asset. So the big question is, how are we different? Well, in summary, we believe it's all about getting smarter, working on the premise that what gets measured gets done, using analytics to track how your people are using the technology and what we've got to do to help them improve their productivity. So if we can track how they're using it, we can then, we can then look at uh, tactics and strategies for, for driving improvements. Now take, for example, uh, the productivity of your people, identifying where the hotspots of Teams usage is, for example, which teams are using video most. Uh, so you can start asking what value is your organization getting from Teams and what changes should be made. So we are a new breed of IT outsourcer, one that acts as a change agent helping you move that business transformation needle, making sure you're not just muddling through. Now let's look at how we bring that to life from a meeting room's perspective. So from the smallest huddle space to the largest meeting rooms, we kit them out in the latest Microsoft Teams room technology, enabling your people, be they in the office or working remotely, be the pro most productive they possibly can when they're meeting and collaborating with their colleagues. 
Now, at Bedrock, we maintain these solutions 24 by 7, so you don't have to. And we charge for them on a per-month basis, turning this investment in your business into a simple monthly OPEX cost. Now, if this resonates with you, then we should talk. I'd love to do business with you. If not, please stay in contact by signing up to our monthly webinar series, which is focused on the very latest innovations from Microsoft on the topic of improving the productivity of your organization. So that's it. I hope you've taken away some useful uh, intel on how you can apply uh, all this great technology to your organization. Nothing more to say than to say bye-bye, stay safe, and uh, have, a, have a great Christmas. Cheerio.